What's up everybody, it's Nina from VR Focus and this is going to be a little video recap about what happened at Google I.O. Everything that's related to augmented reality and virtual reality. So let's round it up. Number one, the first most impressive thing that I saw at Google I.O. was uh, a fox. So basically when you have a phone and you're looking around and you're trying to figure out, okay, which direction do I go? You can see all of the stores. And also if you want to go in a specific direction, there are arrows, you can head that way and figure out where you want to go. But on top of that, if you are basically a loser like me and you get lost all the time, there's also a digital fox, an augmented reality fox on top of the arrows that exist. Kind of like that game that is on the Switch. Google I.O. is basically for developers. A lot of the discussions were about what is augmented reality? How can you use augmented reality? What are the best use case scenarios for augmented reality? And what Google are doing now? So here's a quick recap. When it comes to designing AR apps, spatial awareness and understanding is crucial for helping developers to understand and build their apps. Developers discussed the importance of characters or objects staying in one location as users walked around the character or objects as they used their AR core enabled phones or tablets. So for starters, it was clear that AR developers had to have a deep understanding of space. Before designing or building, they had to understand how much space the user had, whether it was table scale, room scale, or world scale, it would have a huge effect on what they were building. An interesting tip Google developers provided was Adding visual markers on the screen to indicate where an object or character was off screen in relation to the user. This helped give the user an understanding of their space and the AR objects in it. This doesn't necessarily mean all objects and characters have to physically be located in the same space for all users. Google showcased that even when two users were using the same AR app, both users did not necessarily have to look at the same object in the exact same space. Users still enjoyed physically being in the same space and taking part in social activity together. For example, this AR game where the user had to guess a location and put it on a globe. If there was a competition and in a classroom, you might not want to have the globe in the same physical space for every student, nor have the students look at where you were physically placing the objects if it was a competition. Another example they showcased was this AR game where users had to blow into the microphone of their phones in order to push a sailboat along and win a race. Again, they were doing the same action, were in the same physical space, but did not necessarily require their boats to physically be in the same space to enjoy it or each other's company. Cloud anchors was something that I personally got extremely excited about. Cloud Anchors enables devices to have a shared frame, enabling them to have a shared AR experience. This helps users enjoy AR experiences together. Not only are you able to share each other's creations, but you're also able to interact with one another's creations as well. They showcase this in the live demo where they use an iOS and Android device. Super exciting. Audio was also mentioned when it came to AR developers. The developers put down bubbles where they emitted Shakespeare lines or had bubbles of audio that described where an object in a room was and then used their phone to walk around it. For my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw and I shall have no power to follow. Do I entice you? Do I speak to you fair? Or rather, do I not in point this truth tell you? I do not, nor I cannot love you. So now, now the user can walk around, maybe with his eyes closed, a nice pair of headphones, uh, and uh, it's like being on stage with these actors. I'm an elephant. I'm an elephant. I'm an elephant. I'm an elephant. This is a chair. This is a chair. This is a chair. This is a chair. I'm a plant. I'm a plant. I'm an elephant. You can leave a sound in AR that has a 3D position like any other virtual thing. And now you start to be able to hear it, even if you're not necessarily looking at it. This showcased how it wasn't only visuals that are necessary to create a higher level of immersion, but how layering audio on top of the real world is just as exciting and immersive as well. The biggest frustration when developing AR seemed when users were unable to share each other's experiences. For example, if one person was interacting with an AR character, but they were unable to see it. It was fun for one character, the person who was filming it, but it wasn't so much fun for the user who was trying to interact with whatever was there. Google showcased the various areas AR could be implemented in, from education 
creative expression, gaming, and shopping. Out of all of these areas and sectors, their biggest announcements came in education. The biggest thing that Google want to drive home here is how VR and AR is becoming more accessible. The first thing I'd like to mention is their web XR, which enables users to access virtual reality more easily by simply being on the web. Google's web XR platform basically allows VR to be used through the web rather than expensive HMD headsets or expensive hardware. The second is the incredible work Google is doing with various educational institutions. Arizona State University will now have a biology course in virtual reality, enabling students who can't afford a full course to take it, give students more lab time, get molecular, which is something that's impossible to do in real life, as well as provide students who are physically too far away to take the course. It's also a little safer seeing as you aren't physically in a lab and can't blow up anything. This summer, Google is also providing free courses online if you want to learn virtual reality, 360 film, or augmented reality, which I think is incredible. This is really making virtual and augmented reality more accessible. Google discussed how they've learned that when it comes to bringing AR into a classroom and having AR for a large number of users, it's important to not have all the students crowd around a specific marker. It's also important to have 3D characters or objects become bigger as well. The bigger, the better, it seems. And being able to provide a good VR and AR experience offline is also crucial as well. Google announced Tour Creator, which allows users to basically create a tour, bringing in 360 videos and photos or existing Google Map videos and photos that are already there. Users can now create a tour by bringing in all of these assets onto the Poly platform. This is basically Google's platform for 3D content, but now also for the tour creator. The tour can be unlisted, so you can share it with family and friends only, or you can make it public and share it with the whole world. The most interesting thing that I've seen so far at Google I.O. was definitely the Fox, and number two were the free lessons for augmented reality and virtual reality online that will be coming on this summer. And I'm also extremely excited to see how virtual and augmented reality is being implemented into courses and how people online will be able to access education that was never previously accessible before. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. If you want to find out more about virtual or augmented reality, head over to vrfocus.com and I will see you in the next video.